Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be talking about a former New Hampshire police commissioner who is arrested for possessing a truckload of marijuana, literally. We'll also be talking about how the state of Idaho is cracking down on the sale of pumpkins, and we'll be getting into how Congress gave themselves a pay raise this year when many of you are not getting one. That plus a whole lot more coming up tonight on Free Minds TV. Welcome to episode 180 of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. It is Toby here with you. And Nick. You know, Nick, 180, it's a big number. That's how, at least for me, it seems that way, working in schools. That's how many days of school there are. If we did an episode of Free Minds TV for every school day, we would have been on the air for one year. It's one full year, but we don't. We do one once a week, so it's... We've actually been on the air much longer than a school year. Well, it's coming up November. That's going to be our coming on... Our completion of four years going on to the fifth year. Four I years think. for the show, because I came on. Yeah, for the show. Out. I think just next next month, actually. So a long time we've been doing the show. Moving on to our fifth year in the next month here. And we've got a ton of stuff to get into, Nick. We're going to be getting into the bizarre, the weird, the wacky this show. But I did want to start with an article from New Hampshire, at least relating to New Hampshire. Although we are on all over the country and we have viewers all over the world... Some people have been a bit perturbed. People have been uh, watching the show from episode, oh, I say, one, where we talked a lot about local issues, not only about New Hampshire issues, but also about Keene issues. And as we, our audience grew and we started being watched by more and more people from around the country and around the world, we started to talk about more national and international right. topics. Well, because the audience grew to people beyond right. just Keene and then beyond New Hampshire. New Hampshire stuff's interesting, um, and this is a lot of liberty movement stuff going on here. But still, there's, there's a whole world out there with exciting news stories to get into. And so there were some people who were a bit perturbed, said, why, not, why don't we bring it back to some New Hampshire news? Uh, the UK, their government's always going to be growing big, although last week we actually reported on it shrinking. But anyways, these are the comments of, let's, let's talk about something in New Hampshire. So I do want to start there. We are also going to be get, getting into cracking down on the sale of pumpkins as well as cracking down on boosters clubs, putting up support signs in their yards to support the local football team. You know, uh, the, the local commissioner in some parts of the country doesn't like that as well as, of course, Congress uh, once again giving themselves a pay raise even though there's no cost of living increase according to the federal government. There's still not for normal people. Apparently for, for congressmen there is. Uh, us lowly people, no inflation, but if you're in Congress, there definitely is, so you need some more money. Well, they spend a lot of money on booze and womanizing. Maybe there's more inflation it's in hard. horse industries. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure how the federal the government of... calculates inflation. <laughs> well, this is... It's true. Anyways, it's true. we'll be getting into that stuff the second half of the, tonight's show. Usually, but first, actually, <laughs> usually awful people. Let's get into that New Hampshire article. Now, this, this story didn't take place in New Hampshire, but it definitely relates back to New Hampshire. And no matter where you are in the Western world, this article relates to you because it's having to do with the war on drugs and police officers and police corruption. Well, at least in this case, a it's not necessarily a police officer, but it's a police commissioner. A former police commissioner from Wolfboro, New Hampshire, has been sentenced to eight years in prison after Illinois police say they found 900 pounds of marijuana in his pickup truck. That's an awful lot of marijuana. It's, that's like a full pickup truck load, I would think. A pickup truck? That's a lot of anything. I mean, that's a lot of lumber to carry. Uh, maybe it's a heavy duty, is a light duty pickup truck? Can you even fit that much pot into a light duty? Jim Lowry, 54, had pleaded guilty in July to a charge of manufacturing or delivering marijuana. Um, and it's being reported by the union leader that he must pay a fine of up to $2.2 million on top of the prison sentence, which is, I guess the penalty is equal to the street value, the estimated street value of the drug. He was arrested back on March 27, 2009, um, after a traffic stop where he was headed east on Interstate 80 in Illinois. Now, I point out, he's a former police commissioner. Yeah, but he wasn't, I think that was like five years ago or something, Nick. It's not like he's been off the force for He was commissioner in Wolfboro from 99 to 2005. So, so I mean, he's recently a police commissioner, not like in a past life. Recently, and I, I'm, I'm thinking at 900 pounds, that's a, that's a sizable amount of marijuana to have in one's pickup truck. It, it sounds like he didn't just get into this business, uh, say, last year. Uh, it sounds like if you have 900 pounds of marijuana and that's what you're trafficking, 
you've been in the business for a little while. Either that or you're a really good businessman, but it's unlikely, yeah. Right. Typically, I'm, I'm once speculating. It, typically, here. once you get to running that much marijuana, right? Uh, that I mean, that's a huge amount. And, so, and he was running. If he was, I'm presuming he's still residing in New Hampshire, or well, he's probably residing sure. in whatever federal prison he's at now. But the uh, he was smuggling a, a fair distance, so I assume he wasn't just operating with some local grower. Yeah, yes, yeah, as a police probably. commissioner, supporting laws that are throwing people in prison for small less. I mean, in New Hampshire, um, any amount of marijuana is gonna it's up to a year in jail for possessing it. And this man, as a police Think commissioner, is supporting of- these and uh, these laws, and yet he's trafficking. Um, hundreds of pounds of marijuana yeah, I think while over, supporting the laws and throwing people in jail for I think over an ounce in New Hampshire law. is, then, isn't that the felony cutoff? I'm not sure. I, well, once you get an intent to distribute charge, and I think that, I'm not sure exactly how that breaks down. I think even less than an ounce in multiple containers could be a... And Nick, it's, it's one of those things we felony. talk about. Anyone who's seen this show for even a couple of episodes know that our stance is end this war on drugs. It's not working. What's it doing? It's turning our police commissioners into drug traffickers. That's what this war on drugs is doing, people. Can, uh, you can continue to arrest them. You can continue to have these investigations and crack down these internal investigations, but it's always going to be corruption there. There's always going to be um, people that filling the shoes of who's ever arrested. This man's taken off the street for 900 pounds of marijuana. Now he's going to go to jail for a while. You think there's no one else just filling his shoes somewhere? Well, for two points, I mean, when you realize that he, 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 I doubt he was probably dealing at the street level if he was running 900 pounds of it, but if the street value of the drug is $2.2 million, he was going to pocket a good yeah, percentage But that's also that. how the police calculate these uh, their numbers of how much pounds, it's worth. I, could, I don't know. I haven't done the math, but I know a lot of the time they break it down to if you were selling it in the smallest increment, which is, of course, right. a much higher price and you got a really, entire And you've got a really unusually right. high price. So right. typically, what divide by uh, 10, and that's what it would really sit retail mm. for. Typically of what they're doing. I don't know in this case, but... 900 pounds is a lot. Unless it, it depends if he was the owner or if he's just the runner, right. Nick. There's right. a big difference there. Is he going to make 2.2 million? Chances are not. Chances no. are he's some kind of a runner. But he's uh, probably but still making pretty good money yeah, running of course. that There's much There's plenty marijuana. of money because it's a black and that's why market. people that's why people will keep stepping in. That's it's, why you're never going to be able to end the war on drugs because it's a black market and therefore huge profit motives. And as long as there's a demand, there will be a supply. That's just that's the wor- way the world works, folks, and it's, it's time to face up to the fact that we're not going to be able to win this war on drugs and start going for harm reduction. Harm reduction is the way to go, folks. I mean, you're not going to have some kind of this ideal world of a drug-free America. It's not going to happen, folks. It's never going to happen. There's not a drug warrior out there even that would think that would be able to happen. It's not. Everybody knows that. What can we do, though? Harm reduction. We can help make sure that the individual who's using and society as a whole is hurt less. But that's not the direction that some people want to be going. It's the direction that I think the country's going in with at least marijuana to a certain extent. It's still slow. There's a lot less profit in that. I mean, really, when you look at it, there are a lot of people who are employed by an illicit trade in drugs who would not otherwise be employed. You've got Mm. street gangs who are employed. You've got people doing the running. You've got, in some cases middle-class people, even in middle-class suburban neighborhoods, people you wouldn't really think of as stereotypical drug dealers, well, in many cases, they are people who are making a significant amount of money off of the drug trade. And then you've got all of the government employees who are supposedly tasked with winning this unwinnable war, so it's a never-ending yeah. source of employment. And then you've got the police commissioner truck trafficking marijuana <laughs> into New Hampshire, and then his officers arresting people for it. I mean, it's, it's kind of job security, I guess, if it's, you're if trafficking you're already in, you working know, who has it. Well, I think that's why some of the, the corruption does come in, because especially if you're dealing with people who are specifically narcotics officers, they're, they're already really, they're employed as a result of the drug trade. They're it's double in, employed, though, sometimes. If, so if, if you do, if you do go dirty, then you are double employed, but the pay on the other side tends to be much better. Much better. Yeah. Or if you just rob drug dealers yeah, and, and take the evidence money, it, okay, which this does is happen, like, too. People are like, oh, my God, 900 pounds, that's so much. That's going to put a dent in the, in the, no, in the drug supply. No. no. Yeah, I, I heard earlier this week, I don't have this story in front of me, but there was a recent bust in Mexico of I saw 500 tons, Nick. That's... 
Five <laughs> the were impressive. It was like a warehouse right. full. 500 tons. A Bales ton is, is 2,000 pounds. <laughs> 10,000 pounds of marijuana, and there's no, that no even, difference that in, even, in, in supply. That was, Zero difference. I believe that the, the, the reporting was that that was a bust. That marijuana was controlled by the Sinaloa drug cartel, which is a big one. That probably won't even really put a dent it's in the Sinaloa a in cartel. The bucket. It, it, won't put a, it won't put a dent at all in the American supply at all. No. And when you think about it in economic terms, it's probably been, there's probably excess production to offset oh, the Oh, of bucks. course. Every time they run across the border, they send four trucks. They no, only like, expect one to get through because if one gets through, that's tons of profit. The right. poor mules who get to go through, some of them get to spend the rest of their life in jail in some cases. Right. But yeah, they're, they don't count on it all going through. They or they send, get shot by a rival drug gang. Right, and of have course. Their but that's okay. Off. The guys at the quite top. A bit in Mexico. That's how the black market works, though. And in our streets, too. They have enough production that there's going to be some losses. And that's factored into part of their business uh, plan. And that's just the way it works. So let's be realistic about this, folks. We're not, on Free Minds TV, we're not promoting drug use, we're not promoting any illegal behavior. But it's harm reduction. Let's be realistic about the problem, because if you're living in some fantasy world, what problems are you going to solve? Be realistic. What can we do to help the individual and help society as a whole? All right, Nick, we do need to move on because we've got a lot of other stories to get to. And I, I really want to get into this, this um, story about pumpkins. I know that you covered it on the radio show. I wasn't there here. I had to work. It's a pretty busy lately. I know it you covered it. It is a good story, it, though. But I, I've got to cover it on the, the TV side as well, because... It's insane. It's in, this is insanity. Idaho makes national news shutting down roadside pumpkin stand. Well, what were they selling at this pumpkin stand? Maybe some illegal substance? Well, no. They were selling pumpkins. Um, it was not a trick or a treat for a four-year-old and a six-year-old when the tax commissioner came and shut down their pumpkin stand. Two officials from the Idaho State Tax Commission forced the children of Dan and Cammie Char Charace to close a stand in front of their house that was used to sell pumpkins. The kids, four and six years old, of uh, the parents told the paper that they were selling the products to raise money for sports and other activities. So these kids, they grow some pumpkins, they set up a stand, four and six years old, to sell these pumpkins. And what did the bureaucrats at Idaho do with their time? Two of them roll up and shut down the, uh, the pumpkin stand because they don't have the proper paperwork. They don't have the proper tax um, paperwork to, to sell their pumpkins. Is this insanity or what, Nick? It's, it's yeah. We've I... reported on lemonade stands being shut down. I guess pumpkin stands are what's next. I mean, it's, it's, it's a rigorous enforcement of, of the tax laws, but... When you think about it, it's only somewhat more ridiculous because they're doing this to a four and a six year old. If they, if they did this to adults who were selling news. pumpkins. I wouldn't have even heard about it, right. probably. It's probably happening all the so time. It, it strikes us as offensive when they do this to the kids and expect them to get paperwork if they're running what is an immensely small business. Right, but and they the the probably grew a few pumpkins on their own and they just right. are now selling them. But at the same time, even if you only grew, say, $1,000 worth of pumpkins, like, gross, $1,000 worth, and you right. make maybe uh, maybe $100, it depends on what your markup is on the pumpkins, but even if you're only selling a really small amount of stuff, you're still expected to get all the permits fill out all the tax paperwork and pay the taxes to the state of Idaho or whatever state it is. So it's only really a little bit, it seems a little bit more ridiculous to most of us when they do this to kids, but when they do it to people who are a little bit older, then it's just accepted. I guess it's, it's very sad though. I think you've got to... <sighs> Many persons, I mean... I mean it's, it's so troubling to me though, Nick. I mean, now what are these kids, uh, how are... <sighs> I, I'm flustered because, well, you know, it's, it's so, it, it's crushing the American dream, that American spirit. I mean, now, It's crushing the American economy is what it's doing. And there, if you look at the earlier period in American history, for much of the United States history, at least in many states, you've got the federal government and the several states, they collected most of their revenue not directly from people through sales and income taxes. Right. They, they collected taxes, sure, but they were indirect taxes, things like excise taxes and tariffs on say, liquor being imported into the United States and various goods. It wasn't a direct tax on small businesses where 
in the case of a sales tax, you're essentially expected to act, act as a revenue agent for the state if you're a small business owner. And in the case of an income tax, you're expected to act as an accountant for yourself and for the government. You're supposed to figure out how much the government deserves of your income. And I think the economy of the United States would be far better off, number one, if we had fewer taxes, which would necessitate a lot less spending. And we're going in the opposite direction, unfortunately. And it would be far better off if the taxes that we did have were not a direct income tax and not a direct sales tax. We have not always had those things. Right. In fact, for most of the United States' history, there was no federal income tax. And in many states, there was no income tax or sales tax. So these are not things that have always been around. And it's not a form of taxation that we need. But Nick, we need them to keep the economy running, right? Oh, wait. The more and more we put, the more and more it seems to crush. You know, the other thing about this is, besides just the tax portion, is um, the whole permits required thing. We wonder why the economy is in the slumps. Well. If you try to make, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks selling a few pumpkins you might have grown in your backyard, you're going to have the tax man coming down and shutting down your stand. Uh, that goes true for so many different business plans. If you're just trying to make a few extra dollars on the side, well, the government's stepping in and saying, no, we're not even talking about actually creating real businesses out here and actually creating jobs for other people, which is, a, uh, an avalanche of uh, hoops and paperwork one needs to jump through. We're talking about even if you're just trying to make a few extra dollars as a kid, as an adult, whatever age, just a few extra dollars. I don't know, in the care of it, selling lemonade, a pumpkin, uh, raking leaves for someone, um, whatever it may be, more and more of the time, the local government or the state government's going to come down and, and shut you down because you haven't paid them their permit fees. Right. They're hungry for your money is really what it amounts And to. then we go, why is the economy so slow to start back up? Well, you can't even sell a pumpkin on the side of the right. road. Right, right. It, it is stifling because especially for, for small businesses, people who really need the extra yeah. income the most, it's not worth getting the paperwork no. and then, to make an extra couple so hundred dollars. So you shut down the pumpkin stand, right? Now these kids didn't make either the 20 or $30 that they would have gone and then spent at the local sports store for, I don't know, their cleats or whatever for their sporting event or their water bottles, whatever it is. These, and then the sports guy, therefore, doesn't have the money. I know it's a very small portion of it, Nick, but I mean, well, I, I it think does it, I, have an effect. Right, and, and beyond the money that would be earned I, that, that is not earned because people don't enter into the marketplace because of the taxes or that they give to the government in taxes, beyond that, I think that with all the red tape that's around, all, all of the, not just the tax regulation, but all of the permitting process, all of the health and safety regulations that really discourage people from starting a, a very small business, like a micro small business, which used to be how a lot of people would break into pursuing something that would grow into a profession and into a, a more respectably sized business. Well, this discourages people from starting, say, that little project on the side where they build computers in their garage, which is how Apple started mm -hmm. at one oh, point. They started how about Wendy's? A, he started with a very small little hamburger right. stand. I'm sure he didn't have the proper paperwork to do that. Well, there probably it? wasn't as much paperwork at the time. Right. But this kind of thing, I mean, you to even go into a small business now, just to meet the, the regulatory burden, you have to invest tens of thousands of dollars quite often up front and, just to be operating And that's above before you board. have the equipment. That's even before right. you have to go out and buy whatever equipment you need or the store frontage or the advertising to get your business off the ground. You have to, this is paying to the man to have permission to start that small business. Right. I mean, it's, in, it's insanity. So anyway, sad story. These kids now, they've learned a valuable lesson about what government is, what it does, especially when it gets as bloated as ours has. Very sad story. Um, Anyways, what are you going to do except move on to the next story, Nick? I, we don't have time for a break. I think we're just going to roll right over it and get into this next story. We will get to this increase about the federal government because, of course, well, we don't need that extra money. They certainly do in Congress and the Senate. They need the, that pay increase to go on top like of I their six-figure income. It's, it's the liquor and the strippers, I think. God. Because I, it's, I mean, nice. they exclude food and fuel from the way they calculate that stuff anyway, so... Yeah. Old and people don't need their uh, Medicaid or Social Security. You don't need medicine. You don't need food. Right. You don't need heat. Those prices have gone up. 
that uh, the strippers or the hookers, I guess. that. But like that a luxury <laughs> car or a yacht or strippers or very expensive Have strippers liquor, got up? Those are know. things that we can count to try to try to calculate the rate of inflation. We'll be getting into that. But first, Nick, I want to talk about another government regulation, a local government lo regulation, uh, regulation coming out of Michigan that's um, deterring the local booster club from trying to make money and support their their local football team i think that's what it is yep football team all right this is mount morris residents are told their athletic booster signs are in violation of the city's sign ordinance and they must be taken down uh being a proud mom could cost angela angela daniels up to 500 dollars and or 90 days behind bars um it looks like daniels bought a sign supporting her son, Jose Saldana, a defense middle linebacker at the Mount Morris Valley football team, when she uh, purchased a $10 sign for her lawn, then she violated the city's lawn ordinance by actually putting her sign in her lawn. I guess that's what it was for, to not only give the booster club $10, but also say, hey, look, I support my son. But that has irked the local bureaucrats. Turns out, Daniels violated the sign ordinance. She has received a notice and has been given five days to remove the sign or face a fine and possible jail time. The 18 inch by 24 inch plastic sign that reads Mount Morris Athletics Boosters, home of the Varsity Panther, good luck, exclamation point, now rests against her porch because, well, she didn't want to go to jail. This, uh, the city's new part-time code enforcement officer, hired about eight months ago, um, after the city was without one for more than three years. Oh no, what did they do? They had booster club signs in their lawns, I guess. Uh, is now going about his job, and he's handed out quite a few of these warnings. The city manager, Jake uh, LaFergie, said it's not about discouraging support. It's about enforcing an ordinance. We're just doing our jobs here. The, the city council has voted this ordinance in, and it's time for us to enforce it. Now, Nick, as the, the economy has been crashing and tumbling and falling over the past couple of years, why are they hiring an enforcement officer? Could it be to maybe get a little bit of extra income from Probably. some of these residents? Because at $500 a pop, it's a little bit of extra money to bring bring it in. I'm sure this isn't well, the Morris only is thing in, he's doing. I'm, Mount Morris is in Michigan, and I'm not really sure how the the local, like the municipalities in Michigan, collect revenue. I know here in New Hampshire, local taxes are really property taxes is where they get their local revenue from. But no, no matter what you're looking at, property values have gone down, especially in places like Michigan. Incomes are down, especially in states like Michigan, oh. and people aren't spending as much. So in some places, there are local on top of federal, state there's also local income and sales tax. So no matter what you're looking at, revenue for any of those things is probably down, especially in a state like Michigan where their economy is far worse than the U.S. economy on the whole. So a lot of states and a lot of cities are doing this. They're basically they're, they're using the code book or the law book to just start finding money out of people because they can't tax it out of them. So and instead tax of... tax increases aren't popular. It's a horrible, horrible thing, Nick, especially in a place like Michigan that's really been hit by this economy, but really all over the country, where communities should be coming together to support each other by doing things like having a boosters club to raise money for the football team so it doesn't get cut out. I mean, all over the country, sports teams are being cut out after school projects are being cut out uh, because uh, budgets are tight. And kids aren't having the opportunity to play sports or have after-school activities in a lot of places. So you have kids selling pumpkins or booster clubs, raising money with signs so that we can continue these things. You know, community support coming together. And then you have the government coming in and slashing that, uh, the community support out from under people and saying, no, you can't do this. You can't raise money on your own. You can't put a sign saying you support the local football team in your yard. That's a violation of the law. Plus, we're going to fine you $500 and threaten you with jail time. And it looks like, I don't know if that's a violation, it looks like if you're facing jail time, that's a criminal record for supporting your local football team, a high school football team, for trying to donate them money and keep, their, keep them on the field. It's a horrible, it's horrible disgusting. breach of the peace to Man, give money to the Boosters Club. It is just amazing. All right, Nick. This is country. What is happening? Is this what ha the government... This is what happens. This is kind of what we said would happen. I but know. it's not fun to watch it happen. Man, it's so depressing. Especially Who when you live here. <laughs> how, can a, how can a bureaucrat do this and live with themselves? Anyways, uh, Nick, 
Speaking of bureaucrats, we've got an election coming up. It doesn't really matter who you vote for on the federal level, I think, because they're going to continue to do stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, even the Tea Party. I mean, maybe they'll get one or two candidates who'll actually try to cut the size of government. 90-plus percent of them are going to do what politicians always do, which is increase the size of government, especially when it comes to issues like their own pay. And that's what they're doing in Congress. For 2010, Congress is again planning to take a cost-of-living increase um, in 2009, they took a COLA of 2.8%, which cost U.S. taxpayers $2.5 million. So in terms of the federal budget, it's not that much money. But there is a principle to the thing here. Uh, and the percentage for, I don't think they're, I wanted to say it was 2.2% that they were taking. I thought it was 2.7. It's, uh, it's a little over 2% that really they're matter. taking for 2010. But this, as people who are relying on Social Security, retirees, people who are disabled, the COLA increase back in 2009, when last year, when Congress took a pay increase because they were doing such a great job, was 0%. Because the Social Security Administration claims that there is no inflation. And this year, again, 0%. So for the last two years, you haven't got a cost of living increase. Because there's been no because inflation according to the federal government. Because the federal government says government. there's no inflation. Right. It's not uh, except happening. when it affects them. And not only that, but did it say in that article how much they make? I was astounded by that. I think it's $174,000. $174,000. Is that really necessary, especially when they're getting kickbacks of millions and millions of dollars from I, all their... I like what they make in New Hampshire <laughs> in the legislature. I think it's 100, 100 bucks. $100 I think, a year, 200 yeah. per biennium. Plus yeah. they get mileage to drive, which kind of makes sense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we could do away with $100, honestly, and it wouldn't make a huge difference. I think mileage would be reasonable. Man. Let's just pay the travel expenses back and forth for these guys. And, and, guys and they get so much vacation more time, too. It's this, oh, yeah. these fed are, uh, whatever. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Given well, themselves the problem is, I didn't say they're doing, they should do a better job, because no. the problem is they try to do too much. Take more they, vacation yeah, time. Just really just That's true. Only get together one day a year. <laughs> And, and it doesn't just, matter. They'd vote yes out of everything. Pass just bigger shoot the bills. Bowl and then go it, back to where it is. It is just from. so amazing how these federal bureaucrats say that there's no inflation, yet there's inflation when it comes to their bottom line and their pay increase. It's well, that's not so what they're calling. They're not just calling it. A, they're not just saying we're giving ourselves a raise. They're saying this is a cost right. of living increase. Meanwhile, on one, the other side of their mouth, the same news story, uh, my father-in-law sent these to me, um, the same like day news stories are coming out, uh, there is no inflation according to them. It's just, well, yeah. they're talking out of both sides of their mouths. And, uh, yes. and, they're, and Americans are lapping it up. That's why, Nick, I don't know if I'm even gonna vote didn't this year because- Didn't they exempt themselves from the Obamacare provisions too? Because did yes. So they, they, cause they can't Yeah, we reported we wanted uh, Amendment 28 to uh, make uh, all the laws Congress passes uh, include them as well, or to the Constitution. <laughs> That's what we were calling for was uh, an Amendment 28 to make them uh, have to follow the, all the same laws they pass. Anyways, they're Congress. They're above us. Go vote next week because I'm sure that'll change a I'll whole lot. I'll probably vote third party, but there's not too many of the big, big party candidates I'm going to be voting for. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do it. <laughs> Anyways, no, that's going to no, do it won't. for us. Until next week, it's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good one.